My name is Lara Baladi. I'm a, a visual artist uh, who started with photography, my career with photography. And I live in Cairo. I'm from a Lebanese community, immigrated to Cairo a hundred years ago. Um, so I have multiple cultural backgrounds. Well, when the revolution started in Egypt in, two, in uh, 2011, um, there was in fact a huge amount of visual material that was produced uh, very quickly uh, from the first 18 days, which were the major 18 days in Tahrir that toppled uh, President Mubarak, until today. Um, but from the very, very beginning, I, uh, as a visual artist, I, I was very, very fascinated by um, the sort of um, uh, the relationship between some of the iconography that started to appear from the uprising and the resonance it had with previous historical events, uh, and not necessarily that had happened in Egypt, but that had happened uh, anywhere else in the world. So I started to collect uh, material from what I called the Vox Populi, uh, the voice of the people on YouTube, uh, particularly on YouTube, and um, which that, of course, can include people posting extracts from uh, uh, channels like Al Jazeera and, and others, uh, and to collect also in parallel to this archive um, to create a sort of um, uh, overlook of uh, e previous events or political speeches, philosophical speeches, extract from films, all kinds of uh, different materials that resonated with what was happening in Tahrir and what unfolded after the 18 days, uh, such as uh, writing the new constitution, voting, um, violence against women, uh, etc. So uh, that's ha this has been an ongoing process because it started very intuitively and instinctively and as I very often do as an artist, I collect a lot of material, but very quickly on it became methodical and, um, and quite uh, focused. Well, the purpose of this archive that I built on uh, on Gen 25 is that um, first it, it has changed basically, it has evolved. Uh, so the, the initial purpose was very personal, uh, it was for a very personal reason and almost as the only way I found I could at one point later process and, um, and uh, digest uh, what had been, what was going on and what had been going on. Um, but of course, this purpose evolves and the more the archive grew, the more I realized that I was doing something that I, at one point I'd like to share with people and that I would probably get into a space where I could also uh, find ways to connect this archive to other archives that other people have been building on uh, different points of entries into the material produced during the revolution and what happened during the revolution. Um, so, uh, at this stage, uh, at which we're having this, uh, uh, this uh, conversation, what I would like to do uh, is many things. So, uh, one is to have it as um, a sort of, uh, as, a, as a piece in, on its own, which is, you know, uh, an archive for people to tap into at, a, at later stages in terms of uh, information, so very basic. Uh, but also to develop it into an art piece, so to have a sort of visually constructed timeline where I start to recognize patterns in the last two years, so maybe color-coded or create a sort of a visual, um, uh, visual, you know, not so much graphic design, but something that uh, is really using... Um, uh, our eye to recognize events. So, you know, if you look at censorship, you can see uh, a sort of um, presence of blue dots throughout, uh, you know, the visual uh, whatever I'm going to create. And, um, uh, and that it becomes also somehow interactive. So that it's, it's it, I want something that crosses over uh, an artwork with an archive, with a historical, um, you know, uh, with a uh, with, what would you call it, a recording of a moment in history. Um, so it's a, it's many possibilities that this has. Uh, on again, at another level, I wanted to be part of a, the mapping of archives on the revolution, and this I will 
attach it to the Arab Image Foundation's um, uh, website and work, which is about collecting and archiving history of Arab photography. Um, so I would like us to be a sort of portal for people doing research um, to just be able to know and locate where different archives are. And then also it's a, it's a how can I say, it's a, a continuous uh, sort of process which I think um, as it evolves will give possibilities into uh, many different uh, uh, many different uh, use, so you know, you, you, it will it will continue to um, to transform. The importance of the production of this vox populi, as I called it earlier, um, for the during the revolution, is tremendous. I mean, I think the whole world has understood that, especially the world of photography and image making. Um, however, it's very difficult to go through all of the different uh, implications that this has had and still has. Um, but one thing I think that is important to remember and to maybe go back and so that we can actually understand how this happened is um, that Egypt has a very high, I think, I don't know the exact number, but I would guess about 60% uh, or maybe, I mean, a very high number of illiterate, uh, illiteracy and illiterate people. Um, so uh, what was very fascinating is that when the revolution started, the, suddenly the voices uh, got completely liberated and people, I think, who even don't really speak or... Um, uh, sorry, who don't, don't really write and, and read, were actually using uh, visual material as means to, um, to express themselves. And so the image suddenly took a very different role uh, in society. Um, and of course, in particular, in terms of documenting uh, the, the uprising. Uh, what, what was extraordinary for me as an artist more than as a journalist or other kind of uh, image uh, maker and, and professional was um, the damp of creativity that broke. So from having a very kind of contained uh, art scene in Egypt uh, and quite uh, relatively small, uh, suddenly there was a whole world of possibilities and um, and, and and also of languages that have come out of, uh, of the 18 days. Um, so I think the implications of this production was not just about the fact that we documented the event and that it will stay as an archive and that of course all this is extremely important, but really what this meant was that people were able to, um, to exist as individuals, to um, reconquer their territory, uh, to belong again, to uh, to feel like they could participate in uh, um, in the change that they wanted to see and that they they wanted to be you know that they wanted to uh, experience from from this revolution and it's still the case of course now the impact is different because the events unfold at a different pace and we are in a different process of the of the revolution so. Um, because I still think we are in a revolution, although uh, right now it's not exactly a very successful one. Um, so, uh, so of course, the production of these images was on a global level, I think, a pivotal moment in the history of photography and journalism. Uh, but on a local level, it was, uh, um, it was, it came along with uh, the understanding of a certain kind of freedom and the possibility of a certain kind of freedom. Um, I think, you know, at, you, know you, can, you can almost see um, the evolution of uh, the use of uh, visual material from uh, 25th of January until today, almost if you, if you look at it as a chart, uh, you can see uh, point zero and then a really high, uh, you know, like a very high peak um, and then you sort of start to get onto a platform. And, uh, and I think we've reached a sort of platform where uh, people have acquired um, the, the sense that uh, uh, 
you know, a cer certain sense of uh, um, of expression. So they they, they feel much more, uh, you know, overnight uh, there was the possibility of saying things without having the risk of ending in prison or or whatever. I mean, it's still there are still huge issues in terms of what's going on with the with the system and the police system and all of that. However, there are there is still not yet a return to very extreme uh, mm -hmm. visual censorship and expression in terms of censorship. So yes, there is, but there is at levels that is not yet touching citizen. It's for now still um, attacking more directly, you know, the, the pyramid from the top. So so the censorship that's coming back right now is aiming more at the very influential uh, journalists or magazines or you know newspaper that are um, of course against the regime that uh, that exists now and um, in terms of individuals you you have uh, I haven't really seen I mean there are specific attacks against activists and so on but um, but people are posting uh, everything is out and everything is exposed. Um, so that's one thing we have gained from the revolution. Um, I think the reason why I built uh, the archive and how it's today tied to the exhibition I'm actually going to uh, to uh, tomorrow to install uh, one of my works, which is related to the archive. Um, the the uh, what you know the reason why I did this archive at uh, originally was really because I just couldn't cope with so much information at once. Um, and I was uh, extremely, you know, I'm someone who's uh, developed, I've developed my work under a dictatorial uh, and stagnant uh, regime. And it was really interesting to watch how I really belong to a very different kind of speed you know of of action so uh, and because of the nature of how I work and what I do of course all of that but the way I work is that I I absorb I collect I'm a sponge and then you know after a while I find the thread between all the different layers uh, and uh, you know horizontally and vertically um, and try to make sense of it um, of course, this experience is also mixed with a huge amount of emotions and uh, personal uh, direct experience of uh, the revolution because I've been extremely engaged in, uh, uh, in what's happened in Tahrir and with Tahrir Cinema and Radio Tahrir and so on. Um, so, so the archive and the work I've produced for this exhibition is you know, the first step into sort of trying to make sense a little bit of it, or at least saying, you know, this is, let's take it from the start and let's revisit um, uh, points of entry into everything that I have in front of me. So um, the different uh, theories on media, the different theories on perspective, on looking, on seeing, on using photography, on virtual reality, and so on and so forth, and looking back at things while looking ahead. Uh, so this is what I try to do as a first step into, okay, what do I do with this archive? Um, so maybe this was, you know, once this was out, you know, now there's much more space for making the archive into something I can practically give and share to other other people and maybe institutions and, and, and so on. Uh, and also it's become an incredible uh, resource for me uh, to work from. Um, so I've actually produced a sculpture also that I think is a direct uh, outcome of this archive.